Good evening, race fans, and welcome to the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association Rapid Fire Pizza Nationals. We are here today at Richmond Raceway for 200 laps around Richmond Raceway today. Brought to you by MSRA National Series. My name is Mason Heimball with Team Goon Squad bringing you the action here today in 1080p 60 frames a second as our drivers get lined up on the starting grid and ready for the action here today. Starting out in the first row, out in front, David Satini in the 79 machine gonna be in first place with OSN Racing with Braxton DeWeese in the number eight machine with Reaper Speed Lab. Coming in second place, Colby Babber in 10th. And coming in third, Jeffrey Meyer in the 50 machine coming in fourth place with Brent Wall taking fifth. Kenny Meadows starting in that six plot, rounding out your third row, Chris Noble in the number 53 machine, starting out in seventh place. Evan Longacre in the 95, gonna be in eighth place with Barry Stevens in the 78, taking ninth. Timothy Davis in the 92, taking 10th place. Matthew Dyer in 11th. Billy Fitzgerald gonna be in 12th place. Here at the start of today's race, Robert Cook in 13th. Scott Steffens in 14th. Julio Villalobos in 15th. Mike Howerton in 16th. James Duke in 17th. John Binder in 18th. Bobby Harmon in 19th, Kyle Mollering in 20th, Greg Newsom in 21st and last, but certainly not least, Bill Dolph rounding out the field in 22nd. So our starting grid is ready. The drivers have made their way out onto track. 200 laps that we are gonna be completing here today. And I gotta say folks, Richmond Raceway I gotta say, one of the more exciting short track uh, tracks, really, that you could have here for a series like this. So, 200 laps that we're going to be completing here, and when I say short track, uh, Richmond is kind of on the on the larger larger side ish of uh, the short track realm, being at just three quarters of a mile in length. Now we have seen. Well, maybe not here on this series specifically, but if you've been a subscriber to the Team Goon Squad channel, we have seen plenty of short track racing. So, being back here at Richmond Raceway is a warm welcome for myself here in the booth. And with a short track comes a very short pace lap around the field here as we get ourselves stacked up and ready for the opening laps. From the MSRA National Series for the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association Rapid Fire Pizza Nationals. Watch our field make their way down the back straight here. This will be the final time with the pace car in tow. Coming into turn three and out of four. We will see that pace car quickly drop down. And there it goes. Into the pits it goes. And the green flag will fly once we cross the checker line and we are racing here at Richmond Raceway. 200 laps that we need to complete here for today's race and we are off to a good start here already. You can see Braxton DeWeese up in second place there doing a very good job holding off. Colby Babber and Jeffrey Meyer just behind them battling it out for that third place spot here. You see Colby Babber there on the bottom line taking that third place spot doing very, very well here. Billy Fitzgerald Already with a bit of an incident here, it appears that we have had uh, the caution come out already. Uh, if it does seem to be correct here, yes, the caution is out here at Richmond already here. So Billy Fitzgerald going to be the one involved on that one. Uh, he's going to take it back behind the wall here.
So lap three of 200 here. The first caution came out with Billy Fitzgerald on the first lap. And hopefully we had a replay available and we're able to show that there on screen for the folks at home. But right now, as we rack them and stack them once more, David Centini going to be out in the front with Braxton DeWee starting out in second place. Colby Babber going to be in third here. A wide angle view of the field here as they get stacked up. Single file as it would appear, but I think once we get closer to uh, the pace car coming down into pit road, uh, we will see them stack back up double file if I am correct. And it would appear that we do have the 45 of Julio Villalobo is going to be up in front behind the pace car. It does appear that he may get the lap around here or get, get the wave around. We see our two drivers starting out in the front row here. Braxton DeWeese, David Santini. You see Julio Villalobos make his way around the pace car as he gets the wave around. The lights are off on the pace car. When we come back to green, it'll be lap seven of 200 here. Not the ideal start that I'm sure a lot of these drivers wanted to see here, but ultimately they're going to come away from this this restart hopefully feeling a little bit more confident there the pace car goes down into pit road side by side Braxton DeWeese David Santini starting one and two the 79 David Santini across the line he charges away from this field here trying to get himself away from Braxton DeWeese as quickly as possible here as we continue to watch here the look at the field. All the way back here, we got action brewing up all the way back here. Towards the back of the field, John Binder, Barry Stevens, both going to be duking it outside by side, two by two. Three deep it would appear here at this moment. Now as these drivers all get stacked up into a nice drafting package, they're all going to really start to set the pace here for this race. Lap 8 of 200, things are looking pretty calm and steady here thus far. David Santini able to get himself out in front with a comfortable lead over Braxton DeWeese, just over a quarter of a second between the two at this point in time. Colby Babber in third place right now, able to get himself just enough just enough space between himself and Jeffrey Meyer to hold on to third. All four of these drivers here start in the same spots that they've uh, started in here. So they're going to be pretty comfortable here. Look at that. You can see Braxton DeWeese sending a little bit of paint off of that eight machine onto the wall there. I'm sure the, uh, the, the crew over at Richmond Raceway is going to appreciate that. But looking here, you got Jeffrey Meyer. Kenny Meadows both going to be side by side, duking it out here across the front straight and going into turn one. Meyer down on the inside, he falls back a little bit of that Rolex 96 machine. The 50 of Jeffrey Meyer trying to hold on down the back straight, falling into fifth place now. Brent Wall in sixth, just behind him in that six machine. Following Meadows out of three and four down the front straight here once again. Looking back further down the field in 16th place, it's Barry Stevens. The number 78 machine down on the outside right now as the 45 of Julio Villalobos 
Comes down on the inside, gets a little bit sideways down the back straight. That's gonna cost the 45, Julio Villalobos there, a couple, couple spots and a little bit of pace there and probably some tire wear. John Binder, Scott Stevens. Both duking it out for 11th place here. That's Timothy Davis, excuse me, on the outside in the 92 machine. Following it, falling behind John Binder in that 33. He's going to try it again down on the inside of turn one if he can make it stick here. Not quite going to be enough this go around. He's going to fall back, by, back behind the 55. Let's see if he can get a little bit more comfortable pace from there. So right now, a lot of these drivers here doing a phenomenal job keeping this race together after that little bit of a hiccup that we had at the start. Most of our field here gonna be single file for the most part. If we look up front, Kenny Meadows quickly on the tail of Colby Babber in that 10 machine charging his way into the top three. Jeffrey Meyer also holding on to fifth place just behind the 96 of Kenny Meadows. So he's building a little bit of a draft package here with these three drivers, or with the three of them rather. Very good patient racing that we're seeing from a lot of our drivers here thus far. Lap 17 of 200, it's gonna be a long one here, but given that this is a short track and we're seeing currently Lap times being set of about 22 seconds, near, more near the 23 second mark. These laps are gonna tick away right before these drivers' very eyes, but given that uh, most of them usually uh, don't have a uh, live lap counter available to them, or at least on, to, on their display, they usually are uh, kind of guessing what lap they're on especially in real life, unless you have your crew chief uh, yelling at you in your ear what, what lap it is. But that is uh, enough of that here. Look at the action between Bobby Harmon as well as Timothy Davis here in the 92, going to be on the outside of that 73. Be very careful not to stick it too deep on the inside. Bit of a little bit of a package forming up here. You got the 76 of James Duke starting to work his way up here as well as we ride on board. With James Duke in the number 76 machine. There he goes down on the inside of Bobby Harmon. He's trying to find the room, trying to find the speed. Is it going to be enough here this time around? Going into turn one. He goes out the inside. He sends the 73 sideways. That's going to be Bobby Harmon. Not having a great time here as he gets spun. Out of turn two, down the back straight into the bottom wall. That not going to be... Bobby Harmon definitely not going to be too thrilled about that one. He is going to have some words to say about that uh, with that of James Duke in the number 76 machine. But that's going to bring out our caution here. Lap 22 of 200. David Santini faking out the field there for just a moment uh, right as we turn to him. Looking like he was coming down into pit road and the field was going to follow him. And then he said, nope, I changed my mind.
And there we go, folks. So now we actually have a caution count up in the top left side of your screen there. Uh, after fiddling around with it for a second, we got it figured out there. But David Santini, Colby Babb are going to be first and second here on this restart. Kenny Meadows, Jeffrey Meyer going to be third and fourth in the second row with Chris Noble, Brent Wall in your third row here on this restart. The lights are still on the pace car here, but it looks like the drivers that uh, needed to be waved around have been waved around already here. And the lights are going to go off on the pace car, so we will go green here in just a few moments. And we are green here once again. The green flag flies and David Centini sends the gas pedal to the floor. The 79 machine taking the lead as quickly as he can. Colby Babber quickly following behind as well. You see Jeffrey Me Kenny Meadows, excuse me, I'm getting the two names uh, mixed up here. Following just behind in third place here. Look who's just behind them, Jeffrey Meyer, Chris Noble. Duking it out here side by side. Going to be taking it into turn one. Jeffrey Meyer in fourth place currently at this point in time. Going to be doing his gr great job there. Getting away from Chris Noble. I'm not exactly sure why that, why the 53 backed off as much as he did. That looked to be a little disconcerting there. But as we look back here, what a battle that we have. Two wide, two deep. Kyle Mollering. Barry Stevens, Braxton DeWeese, Robert Cook, all in a package here. Following along, Barry Stevens, he's on the outside of Scott Steffens. Kyle Mollering taking the low line there around the 78 of Barry Stevens, Give him a, giving him a little bit of pressure there as they come down the back straight going into turn three. Side by side, door to door almost here for a moment. Oh, the 84, 64 looked like there, Robert Cook. Looks like he had a moment there, not exactly sure what happened, but he disappeared after that one. He, uh, he said goodbye. But David Centini still in the lead. Colby Babber, Kenny Meadows, second and third. As the battle for eighth here between Brent Wall and James Duke. James down on the inside, able to get that speed around. Brent, as they come down the back straight into turn three. A lot of calm and patient driving that we're seeing from most of these drivers here, from a lot of them, really. John Binder there in the 33. He sees Braxton DeWeese down on his inside, but when you uh, when you start to see drivers uh, disappearing and reappearing the way that they do uh, sometimes here in the service, it yeah, doesn't always give you the most confidence going into a battle with someone side by side. Brent Wall in the number six machine right now in 10th place. It was gonna be side by side there with Braxton DeWeese for a moment, but Braxton here on a mission, trying to get his way back up the field. As Braxton has fallen back seven, now six positions as he works his way into eighth place around James Duke. 
And Kenny Meadows here. Started in sixth place on this race and up into third at this moment, and he is putting the pressure on Colby Babber and really being extremely patient here. Taking things very easy, not being extremely aggressive. Oh, as we see, a very, very beat up machine of, I believe that was the six of Brent Wall. Nope, that is James Duke. The 76 of James Duke coming down into pit road after he had that collision just a few laps ago. We're looking at John Binder right now with Mike Howerton just behind him in the 51 with Area 51 Racing. here between Timothy Davis and Mike Howerton. Timothy in the 92, down on the inside. Mike looking a little, ooh, looked a little interesting there as we came into, come into one and out of turn two there. Timothy Davis gonna do everything he can to keep it out in front of the 51. Mike Howerton right on the bumper, going into three. Backing off just a little bit, out of four, down the front straight here. Just in front of them, John Binder, Brent Wall, both uh, starting to get in between a little bit of a heated battle here for eighth, or excuse me, ninth. And now that uh, Brent Wall is starting to feel the pressure of Timothy Davis just behind him, these guys are getting stacked up a lot closer to one another than uh, they probably would like to be here. Everyone here is doing a phenomenal job of getting into that single file groove and keeping a steady rhythm here and waiting for those passing opportunities to come out. And knowing Richmond, there's plenty of them. As you see Timothy Davis just absolutely out of mission here. Working his way around the six of Brent Wall. Doing a phenomenal job at it as well. Well, let's take a moment to look up here. Second place, Colby Babber. Steady. Holding on to second place here, Kenny Meadows. Falling back just a little bit from the last time that we checked in with these drivers here. But all of these, all of these drivers up here are doing very, very well. Very consistent racing from these guys. I'm... Curious to know uh, when they're going to decide to come down here into pit road. If I remember correctly, if my memory serves me correct, I want to say it's around the lap 60 mark to lap 70. Um, my math could be off on that, but it also was a different car if I also recall correctly. But either way, either how, it'll probably be not too far off from that number here. Given that again, Richmond is just a three-quarter mile track. So not exactly the largest oval that we could uh, we could go to here. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't an absolute blast to watch and an absolute blast to drive as well. Matthew Dyer in seventh place right now. He's got Evan Longacre just behind him. Looked to be very interesting there for just a moment, and uh, not exactly sure what was what happened there for a second. But uh, Brett Wall gonna be up on top of the 84 of Kyle Mollering there for a second as Kyle 
charging his way through this field, up nine positions into 11th place right now. Scott, Scott Stevens now also going to be working his way around the six of Brent Wall here. Not exactly sure what's going on here. Let's ride on board with the, the number six of Brent Wall and see if we can get a better idea of uh, what's, what's going on here for that number six machine. And never mind, that's not going to work out the way that I that I would like it to. So let's ride on board here with Kenny Meadows in the 96 machine and uh, get a perspective in third place of what it's like here in Richmond for ultimately trying to hold on to a podium spot here just a quarter of the way through the race. Very, very calm. You can hear it even in the throttle of Kenny Meadows here. He is taking things very easy here. Trying to keep this car as straight as possible. Not trying to get it un unsteady, unhappy. You know, like they say, happy car, happy race. I'm just kidding. They don't say that. So a lot of these guys here, I mean, really any driver here, when you're coming into a race knowing that you have 200 laps, you kind of have to bear in mind that you don't want to push yourself to the fullest extent at the very beginning of the race, or maybe not at least all the way. You know, you, you don't want to be lap 52 burning your tires out because you're trying to catch up to the guy in eighth place like that's just it's it's not worth it now if you're you know if you're starting out in eighth place if you're starting out in sixth place and you want to try and get up to that top three maybe even lead the race absolutely if you can do it on the opening lap or even in the op the first five laps let's say that's perfectly fine and well but if you're, you know, turning lap after lap, pushing yourself 110% every single lap, it's just, it's going to end more than likely very badly here. As look at this, David Santini working up to a bit of lap traffic here. Lap traffic going to be slowing him down here quite significantly. The 79, David Santini getting slowed up by the 78. of Barry Stevens, excuse me, I was trying to find that number there. Uh, so David really uh, almost probably had a bit of a scare there. Colby Babber was on his tail, and really he's still uh, pretty close. Colby Babber just about now, almost a quarter of a second to the 79 of David Centini. Uh, Kenny Meadows, he's still just kind of, he's lingering right now. He's not really trying to push things too aggressively here. He's really just kind of sticking in the mix for top three. And it does appear that we might have another caution that has come out here. And it does, the caution has come out once again here um, for the race here at Richmond. And I got to say, it has been a phenomenal one thus far. I'm not exactly sure if there was a, a race incident that um that caused the fee that caused the caution but i don't exactly have anything um indicating to me that there was an incident so if there was hopefully we'll get that on screen for you folks at home and um get a little bit more of an idea of what exactly uh happened here for today's race but uh here's a little bit of an interesting view here
you see David Santini there as uh, we were trying to get a good view of him. But you can see the field making their way now out of pit road. And uh, Colby Babber, David Santini obviously going to still be second, first and second. Kenny Meadows still holding on to third place here as well. All three of these drivers have maintained a very, very consistent race thus far. And uh, lap 59 of 200, now that all of our drivers have come down into pit row, taken it full advantage of the pace car being out, making sure that they utilize the time uh, that they have. So lap 60 of 200 here. We are just about to the halfway point here in today's race for the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association Rapid Fired Pizza Nationals. I got to say, I do love me some good pizza. Um, and here, even as I, as I sit here watching this wonderful race, I can't help but uh, think of something better to eat right now than a than a hot slice of pizza so if you're thinking about uh getting yourself something good to eat check out rapid fired pizza see if they uh have something that you might be interested in Pace car dives into pit road. And the green flag will come out once again. And as we cross the line, David Santini, just like before, right on the loud pedal into turn one, going to try and get himself away from Colby Babber. Colby with a little bit of a different strategy here, though. Try to keep himself as close as he can to that 79 machine. A little bit of fall off here as we come out of turn four. But behind them, the battles don't end. Braxton DeWeese down on the inside of Kenny Meadows here into turn one. They're side by side out of turn two, down the back straight. Kenny Meadows a little unsettled there. Braxton DeWeese able to work his way into third place. Now down one spot from where he started in second at the beginning of today's race. Looking back into 13th place, it's John Binder in the 33 machine just behind Brent Wall. Trying to do all that he can here. Timothy Davis just up in front of them in ninth place. Up on top of Scott Stevens in the 55, down the front straight. Across the line, Scott Stevens, someone's scraping the wall there. Not exactly sure who that was. Get a little bit of a wider view here of what's going on down on field. There we can see our first place drivers up in front there for just a moment. Got to get a nice view of the whole top 10 there. But Evan Longacre, who is this? Matthew Dyer in the number two machine. Getting a little unstable there. Out of two, down the back straight. He keeps it together into four and out, out of four, excuse me. 
Matthew Dyer trying to hold on to seventh place here. Jeffrey Meyer just behind him in eighth. Going to fall back behind the number two here, but Evan Longacre now in sixth place. Going to be looking to try and crack his way into the top five. Jeffrey Meyer with him. Dive down on the inside of Matthew Dyer. He's able to get around into seventh. A lot of these drivers here getting very, very comfortable once again. <laughs> and even as I say that, who was that? It looks like couldn't tell who that was actually. Not sure if that was Timothy Davis or uh, Scott Stevens there, or maybe it was a different driver. But either way, either how, uh, actually look at this: Scott Stevens, Timothy Davis, both uh, look like they had a little bit of contact there. Scott Stevens in the 55 gets contact with Brent Wall. The caution comes out here once again. Scott Stevens got spun around by the six of Brent Wall there. Bringing out the caution here on lap 70 of 200 here at Richmond. For the rapid fire Pizza Nationals. Fifty-five, very, very slow here. So it looks like he was might have stalled it there. I'm not exactly sure what happened. A few drivers making their way down into the pits, however. Here on lap 71 of 200, I believe this is now the fourth or fifth caution that we've seen here at Richmond. as we patiently await the field to stack back up here. David Centini here having led every single lap of this race at this point. David's gotta be feeling pretty Pretty satisfied at this point, I would have to think. Almost halfway through this race and really hasn't had a whole lot of competition to deal with. Colby Babber has been in second there here this practically this whole time, but really hasn't been on the tail of the 79 of David Centini. Now, got to wonder, though, if Colby might be sandbagging that 10 machine just a little bit. Wonder if he's just holding back, just waiting to unleash the beast. The 
The pace car has come down into pit road here and the green flag will fly. David Santini on the gas pedal once again here. Braxton DeWeese after getting himself back up into third place, he's gonna be down on the inside of Colby Babber. Battling for second place, Braxton DeWeese trying to get everything he can out of that eight machine going into turn three. Still down on the inside of the 10 of Brax, of Colby Babber, excuse me. Colby trying to do all that he can to hold on to his second place spot, but washing up a little bit going into turn one. Out of two down the back straight. Is he going to get enough speed? He collects into the rear end. They don't send each other spinning. We keep racing here, but that was a close call for Colby Babber. Going back single file racing here. Chris Noble just behind Colby Babber now in, for, in fourth place. As Chris Noble now battles it out with Evan Longacre down on his inside, down the front straight. Into turn one we go here. Not a two down the back straight. These two drivers giving each other plenty of room here on these turns as well. Gotta love to see that. But Chris Noble there, almost a close call. As he comes down into the bottom lane, almost collides with Jeffrey Meyer. These two drivers now gonna be side by side into one and out of two. Meyer looks to be the one that's gonna come out on top of this one. As Meyer holds on to sixth place now. Matthew Dyer trying to take the same line. Down on the inside of Chris Noble. Dyer able to work his way around Meyer for that sixth place spot. And the caution has uh, flown here once more as we've had a few drivers come off track here, it seems. Lap 81 of 200 here. So the last time drivers came down into the pits was lap 57. We're still looking at quite a ways before we see them come down for another scheduled pit stop, I have a feeling. Uh, but right now, a lot of drivers here still taking advantage of the caution coming down into pits while they still can.
Now, as our drivers get themselves stacked back up here, looks like they're going to get back up to double file here. David Centini, Braxton DeWeese, both going to be one and two on this restart as they were at the beginning of this race here. And the lights are off on the pace car as we come out of two down the back straight. We will be back to green flag racing here in just a moment. The green flag flies here once again at Richmond Raceway. David Santini off the start once more. Braxton DeWeese trying to stay on the tail end of that 79 machine. You can see just behind them the field charging their way out of turn two, down the back straight into turn three. Looking here, Julio Villalobos in the 45 machine. After a little bit of a rough earlier start, he's all the way back up into seventh place here. As it looks like the caution has come out here once again, and indeed it has. As there was, uh, appears to be an incident with Mike Howerton. Involved. As we come across the line, the lights are still on the pace car here, so we will still be around with the pace car in tow. Just a couple more times as the field gets stacked back up here and ready for the next restart.
lights are off on the pace car here, so this will be the last time around here. And we will be back to green flag racing, and once we are, it'll be lap 93 of 200. Pace car dives down into pit road. And the green flag will fly. Riding on board here with Jeffrey Meyer on this restart going into turn one with the 50 machine. He's going to be down on the inside of Colby Babber here. Colby has had a, had a great race at the beginning here and still having a good one. Just falling back a couple of his, couple spots after he was in second for quite a bit of time here. As we continue to ride along with the 50 of Jeffrey Meyer. Looking behind him is the two machine of Matt Dyer. As we had a photo of Mr. Clean on screen there. <laughs> he is looking relatively pretty clean at this point in time. The two of Matthew Dyer. On the inside of Evan Longacre right now, down the front straight into turn one. You see Jeffrey Meyer just up in front in the 50. Almost get a little bit too close there for comfort. Oh, as he falls back just a little bit, Evan Longacre had to check up there, fall below. Down to the bottom of Jeffrey Meyer. Not sure what's going on with that 50 machine there, but it looks like he's starting to have a little bit of struggles here. Now, for the most part, a lot of our drivers here, the last time they came down into pit road was the caution that came out on lap 57. Braxton Deweese getting a little bit of pressure here in second place from Kenny Meadows in third. Kenny Meadows here has been a very, very stable driver, just trying to stick with whoever it is in front of him and keep that speed and consistency going. Greg Newsom right now in 11th place in the 23 machine, trailing behind the 45 of Julio Villalobos. Holding on to 10th place right now. Very long string of drivers here starting to develop. Jeffrey Meyer holding off Kyle Mollering. Oh. Meyer a little unsettled coming out of turn two. We've seen that already a couple times for the 50 machine. I'm going to expect to see some pit laps happen here very shortly for a lot of these drivers. Greg Newsom up on top of the 33. John Binder, the battle for 10th place here. All of these drivers here trying to keep it calm and steady. After the cautions that we've seen, I don't think anyone really wants to see another one. Actually, right as I say that, the caution is already indeed out. So with that, I would have to imagine that we're going to expect to see 
Our leaders come down here into pit road. And indeed, we will see that. So we're going to ride on board here with David Centini. And uh, get an idea of what it's like for a pit stop here at Richmond. Now, granted, we are under caution here, so it's not exactly the full experience. But we will get to see the Centini crew come out and change the wheels on this 79 machine. Here we go. Hot into the stall. Right side up, tires off, tire on. And around we go, left side up. And away we go, we're off to racing here once again. David Centini with a very, very good pit, stall, pit stop there. But that is gonna have quite the effect here on the rest of our field as we now have Kyle Mollering, John Binder, Timothy Davis, one, two, and three. All going to be slightly, unslightly older tires, just about 20 laps or so uh, for these drivers. But given that um, there's still a, there's still at least one or two more pit stops that we have to make here before the end of the race, I don't think it'll affect these guys too much here. And here we go, the pace car back into pit road. A lap 107 as we cross the line, it'll be 108 of 200, just over halfway. Look at this, almost four wide, going into turn one, but it breaks off quickly here. The 92 of Timothy Davis up on top of Colby Babber here. Kenny Meadows and Matthew Dyer Going to be side by side here for just a moment, going into turn three and out of turn four. Matthew Dyer able to get himself up into fifth place out of that as these drivers continue to battle. Kenny Meadows with the checkup as he almost collides with Timmy D Timothy Davis. A very, very close call for these two drivers, but we got someone sideways. It's Evan Longacre. Sends it spinning around. That's going to bring the caution out here once again at Richmond. As Evan Longacre gets it back around here.
So Kyle Mollering now still in first place, but he's going to have David Santini hot on his teeth, hot on his heels on this restart here. After Santini led a majority of the race here, came out of pits at about, I think it was P5. Quickly working his way back up to second place here. And on this restart, I don't think we're going to have, we're going to see any problems with David Santini getting himself back up into first place here, especially being on those slightly fresher tires than that of uh, Kyle Mollering. We'll see here if the lights will go off on the pace car and if this, if this will be the last time with the pace car in tow. And indeed it is, the lights are off on the pace car. Car dives down into pit road here. As we cross the line, it'll be lap 115 of 200 here. For the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association, Rapid Fired Pizza Nationals, Kyle Mollering. Trying to do all that he can to hold on to, on to first place here is David Santini. Charging his way back up into that second place spot, or holding on to, back into first place, excuse me. Uh, where he held on to for so long. We're watching with Colby Babber right now. The look up here. Kyle Mollering's going to be in trouble going into turn three. David Santini's down on his inside. Kyle not going to put up much of a fight there. He's going to let the 79 on by. The leader back into his place that he works so hard for here. Matthew Dyer in fourth place, just behind Colby Babber here. It looks like he's gonna try and take it side by side, but it does not take long for the caution to come back out here.
So David Santini here back in the lead. After a very short battle here with uh, Kyle Mollering. Kyle was able to lead a few laps here, so hopefully he'll be able to stick it out here in the, in the top three. But Kyle also going to be expected to come down in the pits a little bit sooner than David here uh, before the end of this race. As uh, Kyle, last time in the pits was lap 81. And I'm sure that he is going to want to uh, get on those fresher set of tires here for the end of the race. Uh, he's going to need to uh, in order to be able to come across the checkered, checkered line with the, with the flag. We'll see here if the lights are going to come off on the pace car this time around and hopefully this will be the last time once again um, indeed it is so next time around or the rather this time will be the last time we come around with the pace car in tow and we will be back to green flag racing here Car drops down into pit road. And the green flag flies here at Richmond Raceway. Once more, David Santini with an impressive start here once again. As he has done time and time again here, getting a wider view of the field. As they work their way out of turn two, down the back straight. Got a little bit of trouble there for fifth place. It looks like Chris Noble could be involved. We're going to be in a bit of a pickle here. Chris Noble down low of Matthew Dyer. It looks like they touch doors there for just a moment as they come into turn one here once again. Chris Noble here once again down on the inside. You see Kenny Meadows, a driver that was up in third for quite some time, trying to reel himself back into the top five here. We look here, Braxton DeWeese, another driver that uh, has done quite well here in today's race. Up into sixth place currently. Everyone's starting to fall single file here now up in, up in the front of the field. Let's see how things are towards the mid midfield and on back. We're looking at Bobby Harmon in the 73 machine. In 12th place right now, following behind, I believe that's his teammate, Mike Howerton. Julio Villalobos in the 45, just behind Bobby here. Trying to stay on the bumper of that 73 as close as he can.
Riding on board here with Kenny Meadows in the 96 machine. As he has Chris Noble up on top of him. Very clean pass here from Kenny Meadows as he continues his charge down the front straight. It looks like he's going to quickly collect himself back up here into the top three in the next few turns. Continue looking through the field though. Jeffrey Meyer working his way around John Binder in the 33 machine. Jeffrey Meyer here has shown some very considerable pace, but has not quite had the race that he was looking for not here today, but thus far doing a very impressive job nonetheless. We look here with Colby Babber back into second place now. Matthew Dyer just behind him in third. Colby, after a little bit of a setback, finding himself back up into second place here. Going to try and hold it on here. Lap 133 as we cross the line. Let's check back in here, like Greg Newsom in the 23 machine with Evan Longacre up on top. Look at how beat up that 23 machine is here. You can see the smashed up rear end and you can even see just behind him the 66 of Bill Dolph. Having suffered a little bit of the same fate. As he's missing uh, the entire front end of, his, of that 66 machine here. A little bit of a lock up there from the rear. That might have even, oh, actually, that looks like he blew his engine. I think Greg Newsom blew his engine. He is smoking all over the place. 23 machine gonna come down here into the pits. Get it into the stall and get it looked at. Hopefully, it can be fixed and put back out onto track. But from the looks of it, He's going to need a new uh, new power unit after that one. Braxton DeWeese, though, with Chris Noble duking it out for the fifth place here currently. Braxton down on the inside. Going into turn one. Chris Noble, a little bit of a charge there coming out of turn two. Down the back straight, he's able to keep up side by side here with Braxton. Going into turn three, Braxton able to send it in a little bit further before having to slow that machine down. Chris Noble on the high side at the disadvantage. Gonna have to slow it down just a little bit to be able to make that turn effectively. As uh, looks like our caution has come out here once again. So a few drivers going to make their way down into pit road here. David Santini going to be one of them. Let's ride on board here once again with the 79 machine and get another view of a pit stop here at Richmond Raceway. 
There you see the pit crew waiting, and out they go. Hot into the stall. He had to back up there a little bit. That's going to cost Santini just a little bit of time here. little bit of a slower stop than uh, David Santini probably would have preferred there. As David comes out onto track, he's going to find himself in 8th place currently. Matthew Dyer going to be leading the field now with Braxton DeWeese in 2nd place. As we cross the line, the lights go off on the pace car. When we come back to green, it'll be lap 144 of 200 for today's race. We see the pace car dive down into pit road here once more. Matthew Dyer, Braxton Weiss on this restart side by side. Braxton there trying to match Matthew Dyer off the line. Braxton, very good pace here off this start. And look at this, we are too wide, almost five deep. As these drivers continue their chase, but we got problems here, the 76. James Duke as well as Colby Babber getting involved in a little bit of an incident here. That'll bring out the caution here once more on lap 145 of 200 right after we go right after we have just gone green. I'm sure this field is uh, going to be feeling a little bit frustrated after having to come back to uh to a restart like this.
And so as we cross the line, the lights should go off on the pace car. And not this time around, but it should be the next time. And indeed, the lights do go off this time around. And once we cross the line, it'll officially be the three-quarter way through this race. into turn three and out of four. The pace car drops down into pit road. And the green flag flies once again here at Richmond Raceway. Braxton DeWeese out in front with Matthew Dyer. Following in second place. Bobby Harmon, Jeffrey Meyer gonna be side by side here. Going into turn three, very close to one another, almost banging doors with each other. You see David Santini, the 79 machine, trying to take it three wide here. Down the front straight, going into turn one. He's on the inside now, Jeffrey Meyer. Working his way up into fourth place now. All these drivers here doing as well as they can. Jeffrey Meyer. Trying to hold off David Santini, but it's not going to be enough this time. As David continues his charge, Braxton Weiss a little bit in trouble here as he's going to be side by side with Matthew Dyer. Going into turn three, it's Dyer down low. The two going to have the advantage of speed as we come down the front straight. Ooh, a little unstable there for the number two machine. He's able to keep it together though going into turn one. As it does appear, the caution has come out here once more. Matthew Dyer here, Braxton DeWeese, David Santini. All gonna be one, two, and three here. A few drivers making their way down into pit road. While the opportunity is still available to them.
And as we come across the line here, it looks like the pace car is still going to stay out with us once more. Or at least a couple more times here. Lights do go off this time around, so. We will see the green flag come out here. Lap 158. We will be back to green. 43 laps left to go here at Richmond Raceway. Flag is out here. Matthew Dyer trying to hold on to his lead. As Braxton DeWeese tries everything he can to hold on to second place, Kenny Meadows. In second place here, look at this. David Centini hard charging behind Braxton DeWeese, trying to push that eight machine to give him a little bit more room here as we approach turn one here. Centini down on the inside, able to make quick work of Braxton DeWeese. Braxton slowing up Kenny Meadows there. Just a little bit, but it's still a battle here. For the lead right now as Matthew Dyer starting to feel a little bit of pressure now from David Centini. Going to be on a lot fresher tires here as well as that 79 quickly approaches the rear end of Matthew Dyer. Let's ride on board here for just a moment with David Centini as he works his way around Matthew Dyer here, switching over to Matthew Dyer in that number two machine here. Give you a little bit of a perspective here of what's going on and looks like the caution has come out here once again. Matthew Dyer going to come down here into pit road now after he's been on those same set of tires since lap 103. David Centini, Kenny Meadows, John Binder all came in lap 139, so they're still going to be good for a while. And they should be able to hold out here until the very end of the race. And especially as we are under caution, they're not going to be burning through... Uh, burning up those tires as much as they would under green flag conditions here. But they will be a little bit colder, I would have to imagine, so they will have to be careful on this restart.
So David Santini back in the lead here. As we still await the pace car to come back down into pit road for hopefully the last and final time of the race. So David Santini, Kenny Meadows, both going to be one and two on this restart here. As we come down the back straight, the lights are off on the pace car. Going into turn three, out of turn four. Pace car is in, the green flag is out. Across the checkered line, David Santini goes. It's lap 166 of 200. John Binder here down on the inside of Kenny Meadows. A little bit of scraping happening for Evan Longacre just behind him. As we look here, just a little bit of a wider view, but look back here, there's trouble. Braxton DeWeese almost had, almost had a little bit of a moment there. Able to keep it together. As he works his way up into 10th place here after that little bit of a moment. New cars scraping and banging against the wall here. But up in 4th place, Jeffrey Meyer trying to hold off Evan Longacre here. Charging down the front straight, Longacre going to be on the outside. Meyer takes the inside advantage coming down out the back straight here. Going to keep it down low, though. The action's still brewing, but there's trouble. Matthew Dyer in the number two machine. Brings out the caution here once again.
So David Centini, Kenny Meadows, John Binder, a one, two, and three on this restart here. I believe the lights are not off on this one, so we will be going around with the pace car at least one more time here. What a race it has been here, folks. I, you know, from what I have seen and from what I've heard, this is definitely not the normal for the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association. This is definitely unorthodox uh, for these drivers, and I'm sure a lot of them are not going to be too pleased after this race. Um, definitely not something that you want to see as a driver. Multiple cautions coming out, back-to-back -back cautions. It is definitely very taxing as a driver. And as we cross the line here, the lights do go off on the pace car. And when we come across the line here, it'll be lap 174 of 200. Just 26 laps left to turn here at Richmond Raceway. Race car dives down into pit road. And the green flag flies once more. David Santini off the start here. Kenny Meadows following just behind him in third and second place, rather. As he tries to get his way around John Binder here. Looking just behind them, Evan Longacre, Julio Villalabo side by side down the back straight. Going into turn three here, keeping it together. We're too wide, too deep here for fourth place here. Julio Villalobos with the advantage down on the bottom line. Evan Longacre trying to do all that he can here. 26 laps left to go. Oh, Julio, hold on to it, buddy. Hold on to it. Villalobos in the 45. Almost a bit of a moment there. As we keep it together, we're still racing. All these drivers trying to do all that they possibly can here in the final moments of the race. Just watching throughout the field here, just seeing how these guys handle these last 25 laps that we have left here. You're seeing all sorts of damage throughout the field. You can see Brent Wall with front end damage as well as the 66 of Bill Dolph, who we saw earlier, missing that front bumper. The 45, Billy, Julio Villalobos. Gets himself sideways here with 24 laps left to go. That brings out yet another caution here. Richmond Raceway definitely has been taking its names here today for the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association.
So David Santini, Kenny Meadows, Braxton DeWeese, one, two, and three here with 21 to go. The pace car still in tow here, so once we come to green, it'll probably be 19 laps left before we see the end of the race. So it will not be 19 to go as the lights are still on the pace car here. The field's still getting themselves racked up and sorted here. And as the lights are off on the pace car, this will be the last time around. When we cross the line, it'll be 18 to go with the green flag. Let's see if our drivers here will end it under green flag conditions. Pace car ducking down into pit road. David Santini on the gas as early as possible here. Braxton DeWeese though with the charge down low. Second place down the back straight. He's able to get himself around Kenny Meadows there pretty effectively. Just behind them though, Chris Noble looking a little unstable there. Pulling it back together, pulling it into turn three and out of four. He's just in front of Bobby Harmon. Gets a little bit loose there once again. Bobby Harmon able to capitalize on that and get himself around Chris Noble. So now Chris gonna be charging behind Bobby here, trying to retake that spot if he, if he possibly can. 17 laps left to go, 16 as we cross the line here at Richmond Raceway. David Centini up in the front still looking to possibly take home the win here as I see he has had quite the strong race here I have to say Kenny Meadows as well as well as Braxton DeWeese all three of these drivers really have had a strong performance here at Richmond Raceway even despite all the cautions and uncertainty that I'm sure a lot of these guys have had throughout this race everyone has done a phenomenal job here Brent Waldo down on the inside the six machine Actually, he's up top here. I'm getting my drivers mixed up. He's up on top, trying to find himself some room here. So we got a midfield battle here. Quite the pack of drivers all battling it out here. Four positions in the final few laps of the race. 13 to go, 12 as we cross the line. 13 as we cross the line, excuse me. Julio Villalobos here, a driver that we have seen involved in a few different wrecks here. Still charging his way through the field. James Duke in the 76 machine, feeling a little bit of pressure from John Binder just behind him. Down on the inside, it's Binder. They collide with each other into two. They keep it together down the back straight, wow. That was almost very, very bad for these two drivers. Able to keep it together though, 11 laps left to go as the leader crosses the line. A 
Looking up here in at the front, Kenny Meadows right on the tail of Braxton DeWeese for second place. Making their way through turn three right now. Brow, wow, Kenny Meadows taps the rear end of that number eight machine, almost sends it spinning around. Riding on with the nose cam of John Binder here, you can kind of get a little bit of a different perspective here at Richmond Raceway. Riding along with our drone camera here at Richmond. Watching John Binder in the 33. See Mike Howerton just in front in ninth place. Julio Villalobos very, very close on the rear end there. As we come down the back straight into turn three. It looks, sounds like we have a little bit of trouble happening towards the back of the field, but it's eight laps left to go here. We are still green flag racing. Kenny Meadows still right on the tail of Braxton DeWeese here. We're clicking off laps extremely fast here. Meadows still right on the bumper of Braxton DeWeese trying to get his way into second place here, but looking just behind them, sixth place battle between Bobby Harmon, Evan Longacre, and Matthew Dyer. Longacre down low, holding on to sixth place right now as Dyer follows just behind him in second place. A lot of these drivers here starting to fall into single file as we wind down closer to the end of the race here at Richmond Race Raceway. Braxton still holding off Kenny Meadows all that he can here. With four laps left to go as David Santini crosses the line here. These will be the final battles here for the end. It's Kenny Meadows here down on the inside of Braxton DeWeese. He's going to try and take that second place spot. He's successful in doing so. Braxton though. Going to see if he can try try and reciprocate that. Kenny Meadows charging his way down the back straight into turn three. Two laps left to go here at Richmond, folks. This is where it all is going to count. Colby Babber trying to crack his way into the top three here with only two to go. Right on the tail of Braxton DeWeese. Into turn three and out of four. Colby's going to have to really charge it this next time around. The white flag is out. David Centini still in the lead here. Kenny Meadows just out in front in second place. The checkered flag flies. Centini crosses the line, taking home the win. Kenny Meadows across the line in second. Braxton DeWeese in third and Colby Babber in fourth with Chris Noble taking home fifth place. And our official race results. David Santini in first, Kenny Meadows in second, Braxton DeWeese in third, Colby Babber in fourth, Chris Noble in fifth, Evan Longacre in sixth, John Binder in seventh, Matthew Dyer in eighth, Julio Villalobos in ninth, Bobby Harmon in tenth, Mike Howerton in eleventh, James Duke in twelfth, Brent Wall in thirteenth, Timothy Davis in fourteenth, Bill Dolph in fifteenth, Kyle Mollering in sixteenth, Robert Cook in seventeenth, and Jeffrey Meyer in eighteenth. Greg Newsom in 19th, Scott Stevens in 20th, Barry Stevens in 21st, and Billy Fitzgerald in 22nd.
That is going to conclude our coverage today of the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association Rapid Fired Pizza Nationals. My name is Mason Heimball with Team Goon Squad bringing you all the action here today. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Hey everyone, this is Mike Howerton here with the Rapid Fired Pizza National Series League. And uh, we are going to start right off. This was a wild, wild race here at Richmond Raceway. And the man taking third place sliding onto the podium tonight is Braxton DeWeese. Braxton, how does it feel to be on the podium tonight? Uh, I say it feels pretty good um, with the car we had on night. It was being tight. Um, it was getting tighter and tighter and tighter as the run went on. So um, that was very frustrating, and I was trying to uh, accommodate and adjust to that. Um, with that last uh, time I, I pit there, uh, I want to say with around 40 to go on the dot, um, I thought I did a pretty big swing at the adjustment, but I didn't want to be, like, too aggressive with it. Um, now thinking back on it, I probably should have been a little aggressive on it. Uh, I'd rather it be loose than, uh, than it be tight. I'd rather... I uh, have to hustle the car and, and worry about throttle control instead of, you know, turning her left and then just letting her be and um, and not being able to do anything off the corner. But um, uh, really happy to third place. That was the goal. Um, and looking forward to Martinsville. Well, you passed me a few times. So let me ask you, did you have any tires left in the bank or did you spend them all? Oh, I definitely spent them all. Um, on lap 20 or 22, um, like one of the first cautions, I came down pit road because uh, my screen had froze coming off turn two for about a second or two. Uh, and then I ended up clipping the wall a little bit, and I got a little bit of damage. So I wanted to come down, fix that. And I also wanted to um, uh, make an adjustment with full fuel and see if that would do anything. As uh, Like I said, my car was tight. So um, we learned from that. Um, definitely, definitely wish we could adjust it a little bit more. I felt like we might have had something for David if we were looser there for sure. But um, all in all, good, good night for us. Absolutely. Let me ask you another question. Yeah, I, 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 don't know how, I don't know if there was a single car on the track that didn't have at least a scratch or something. So what was your damage looking like? How, what kind of, uh, you know, how well did you, you maintain your car uh, throughout the race? Were you involved in any major incidents as well? Um, I was you know, I was involved in a little beating and banging, but um, you know it's a short track. It's Brisbane. It's going to happen. Uh, close race, and it's definitely going to happen. Uh, I'm going to go back and look on the things that uh, uh, the times that I made contact with people and see if they're my fault um, and try to work on that and, uh, and try to not do that again for the next race. But uh, definitely have some right front damage, like I said, when I hit the wall in lap 20. Um, I know I also uh, uh, got into somebody else. I want to say or. Like I said, I have no clue uh, if it was my fault or not, but I have to go back and look at it. Uh, we also got a little bit more right side damage from that, but um, all in all, uh, we can't really complain. You know, started second, finished third. Uh, we'll take it, and we'll try to keep this momentum going to uh, Martinsville. That sounds like a plan. Any final words to say tonight? Yeah, most definitely. I have uh, a lot of fans and uh, friend. Excuse me, fans. Uh, friends and supporters that uh, uh, support me and stuff. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to them for usually tuning in for all the broadcasts and uh, uh, keeping up to date with the fan, the fan page on, on Facebook that my dad does and whatnot. Um, but I also want to thank the sponsors that I have. Oh, big thanks to Reaper Speed Labs. You know, I'm learning a lot with them, uh, getting fast cars from them, just working on them a little bit, um, trying to see uh, what I can learn and what I can change and uh, improve and become better for the uh, upcoming races uh, throughout this whole year. Um, but I also want to thank Alan's Art Images, CD Photography, Venice Publical. Uh, Alan, I don't want to say Alan's Art Images, but I didn't already say that. Uh, Rapid Response, uh, GP Diecast for sure. GP Diecast is a very uh, big sponsor of mine as he was on the car. You can go to www.gpdiecast.com for any diecast needs, 124 scale, 164 scale, and also 118 scale Indy cars. Uh, they have a wide variety of, uh, of cars there. Uh, you can go out, check them out. Um, He'll deliver it to you really quickly. It's nice. There's no hassle, no nothing. It's very smooth. So uh, go through him if you want your diecast needs. But I also want to thank Blaze Designs for uh, the paint team and everybody that tunes and supports me. And look forward to Martinsville next week. 
Well, Braxton, it was good to see you on the podium, and hopefully we'll see you there more this season. That's what we're moving on now to second place finisher tonight. He is no stranger to the podium here in the rapid fired pizza national uh, series here. And not only that, but he was our champion last year for the season. That is Mr. Kenny Meadows. Kenny, how's your car tonight? How, is, it, is it still alive and kicking? Yeah, my car is great. I didn't have a single scratch on it. Um, I felt like I had enough to battle David, but I uh, messed up the last restart, couldn't get to him. Yeah, as we, you know, as, as all this, ca it was so many cautions in this race, you know, and you and David and some of the guys that were up front uh, stayed up there most of the time without much contest because, you know, of all the cautions that were happening. Uh, let me ask you, was there any point in time because of tire strategy that you had to drop pretty far back in the field and work your way up tonight? No, I, I, my car was strong all night. I mean, I think I had enough to definitely get up there and win. Um, I went back like one time uh, to like eighth place, I think, when I pitted, but overall we were fast and stayed up there. Uh, yeah, the strategy, I mean, uh, I still have one set of tires still if I really needed them, but I didn't feel like I did. Yeah, I saw during that, uh, we, we had caution around that, like 180, 182, something like that, and I saw Evan and a few other guys go in. Uh, to get tires, and I know you stayed out, and I was I was kind of wanting to see how that tire strategy played out, the difference there, but it definitely worked out for you and your team. Um, and it, as we as we move forward into Martinsville, I mean, we thought this race was a close quarters race, but Martinsville is an even smaller track. So what what what's on your mind as we start to gear up to head into Martinsville next week? Well, I think uh, a lot of us will have a, uh, a lot to reflect on after this race. Um, you know, I think uh, as long as we practice our breaking points, we'll be good. And uh, just don't overdrive, you know. Last year was pretty clean. Uh, I think I finished in second or third. Uh, so hopefully we can continue that. Yeah, and hopefully you've had, a, you've had multiple podium finishes so far this season. Hopefully that keeps up for not only you but the rest of your team. Any final thoughts tonight uh, on the race or, or in everything that's happened so far in the league this year? Uh, nope, I just want to thank uh, Rolex for helping me know what time it was after all that pacing and uh, cautions. And uh, I want to thank uh, Old School Ninjas and uh, Rapid Fire Pizza, uh, broadcaster uh, you mike uh, the fans and all the drivers participating uh that's how we put this thing on uh you know for better or worse all right kenny thanks man good finish tonight and the man who won the race this is two in a row i believe david centini you are on fire man hey mike yeah absolutely i mean uh, a little worried coming into this race uh, we we made a few adjustments to the car but um, didn't know how it was going to be, but I guess it uh, ended out pretty good here. Yeah, I mean, you're on fire so much. I was like, somebody beat him tonight. I mean, you, you have got two in a row. I believe it's your third win this year. Your team is doing something right. I mean, what what were you guys doing when you were uh, working on the set this week? Like, kind of what was your mindset and building? And, and it, did you have any struggles that you had to overcome? Oh, uh, yeah, we, we, we had a few base sets we started working off of, and we were comfortable with them, but it didn't seem like they had the, the, the best of long run speed, so we tried, to, tried a few more, um, kind of loosen them up, tighten them up a little bit here and there, trying to get everything good, and like I said, we kind of just got comfortable with something, and, you know, that's, that's just what we went with. There was quite a few fast cars out there, so, I mean, we, we definitely had other uh, competition. I mean, Kenny was fast, Braxton was fast, Colby was fast there at the beginning, um, some of those guys got into it a little bit, a uh, little bit of damage and, and different uh, strategies. Um, a little unfortunate for some people, but, uh, I mean, otherwise, I mean, it was a good race. Now, I know that a race like tonight that was full of cautions can be kind of boring for us drivers, uh, you included, but when you're in the lead, it's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Well, early on, when you get cautions, it's not such a big deal. But there at the end, um, after the last caution, I was convinced there was going to be another one, and that's the last thing I wanted. 
Um, I had another set of tires, but I knew if it came out, more than likely I was going to come in, and no one was going to, uh, or every, no one else was going to come in. Everyone was going to stay out, and then you know, vice versa. So I, I, I knew my bed was made no matter what happened there. Thankfully, it, it didn't come out, so it worked out. So I think it's pretty obvious so far in the league that the two front runners is our defending champion here at Kenny Meadows and uh, and the man who's won two in a row tonight, David Santini. Uh, David, what are your thoughts here with your competition with Kenny? How's that going and how is it on the racetrack? Is it is the competition up when you guys are racing each other? Oh, absolutely it's there. I mean, uh, there's, there's quite a few guys out here every week and then you have other guys that – um, just kind of come out of nowhere, and then they're there. I mean, it, it's, there's definitely competition. I, Kenny had a great entry, and I, I thought for sure he was going to have something for me there at the end. But like I said, he got into a little bit with Braxton there and battling him, so I kind of ran away with that one. But, I mean, yeah, you, you never know what's going to happen in these races. And like I said, I was convinced there at the end that it, it, it was out of my hands, and it luckily stayed in there, so I, I can't be happy with that. So I think what everybody's wanting to know is your thoughts on next week. Are you going to pull a hat trick? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the goal. But, I mean, we all know uh, the struggles we had here tonight. Uh, thankfully, I was out front, so I didn't have to deal with them. But we know how that goes. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of strategies at Martinsville. And then, um, again, with, with people, we're, we're going to get into each other, and it's going to happen. So it's more survival than anything. I mean, obviously, if you're out front, you, you can stay lucky and stay out of a lot of it, but again, I mean, there's different strategies that are going to be played out, so you never know when you're going to be mid-pack, battling, you know, get turned, get into somebody, so I don't know. It's fun, though. Uh, I, I enjoy it, but maybe I enjoy it because I have a few wins in my pocket here. Um, if I was some of the other guys, maybe not so much. Well, as we finish out this broadcast tonight, I'm going to give you the floor as we finish this thing out. I appreciate it, Mike. I just appreciate everybody who helps run this league, everybody who comes out to race each and every week. Um, I know we get get into it with each other a little bit, but it's it's enjoyable, and uh, I think it's going to continue to get better throughout the year here. Um, Rapid Fire Pizza, everybody at o OSN and OSN Racing uh, working together to build these sets every week. We have great cars every week, and uh, our broadcaster, and then, of course, you, Mike, uh, putting on these great interviews each and every week for us. David, thank you. I appreciate it. Folks, there's your winner tonight, David Santini. Uh, this is his second race in a row, and they're heading strong in the Martinsville where he's going to try to pick up a third win in a row. Folks, we are so glad to have you here tonight, and we are picking up a, a actual a decent following of, uh, on our broadcast now. We are broadcasting for several weeks, and, and our viewership is going up and up. And we, I just want to say on behalf of everyone here at the Rapid Fire Pizza MSR, MSRA League, that we appreciate you tuning in for these great races and these great broadcasts full of awesome drivers here in the league. And uh, we just hope that you continue coming back and enjoy these races, especially the awesome competition that we're having here each and every week in the league. And myself, for Mike Howerton, and everyone here at the Rapid Fire Pizza National Series League, we just want to thank you for tuning in for this race. And as always, we will see you in the next one.